This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the first day of December in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. The International Court of Justice today handed down provisional measures that essentially blocks Venezuela from taking any action that could change the current situation in the Essequibo region. In its unanimous decision handed down in The Hague, the court ordered that Venezuela refrains from taking any action which would modify the situation that currently prevails in Guyana's Essequibo region, whereby Guyana administers and exercises control over the area. The International Court also ordered both Guyana and Venezuela to refrain from any action which might aggravate or extend the dispute before the court or make it more difficult to resolve. The president of the ICJ, Justice Joan Donahue, handed down the orders. Unanimously, pending a final decision in the case, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela shall refrain from taking any action which would modify the situation that currently prevails in the territory in dispute, whereby the Cooperative Republic of Guyana administers and exercises control over that area. It therefore means that Venezuela cannot annex the Essequibo region or create a new Venezuelan state that incorporates any section of Guyana's territory. Unanimously, both parties shall refrain from any action which might aggravate or extend the dispute before the court or make it more difficult to resolve. And in delivering the orders, Justice Donahue made it clear that the provisional measures granted by the International Court of Justice are binding. The court recalls that its orders indicating provisional measures under Article 41 of the statute have binding effect and thus create international legal obligations for any party to whom the provisional measures are addressed. Before handing down the orders, Justice Donahue said the International Court, in arriving at its decision, found that there were sufficient grounds to grant the provisional measures sought by Guyana, having established in 2020 that it has jurisdiction to preside over the territorial case. The president of the ICJ reasoned that while at this stage of the proceedings, the court is not called upon to determine definitively whether the rights which Guyana seeks to protect exist, it considers that Guyana has sovereign rights over the Essequibo region, and that in the absence of such provisional measures, irreparable prejudice could be caused, so that right which is a subject of judicial proceedings also before the court. It was noted that a fifth question included in the planned December 3rd referendum in Venezuela refers explicitly to the creation of a Guayana Essequibo state and the acceleration of plans to grant Venezuelan citizenship and identity cards to persons in the Essequibo region. The court also took into consideration official statements emanating out of Venezuela, including statements by the President Nicolas Maduro and military officials. The court considers that in light of the strong tension that currently characterizes the relations between the parties, the aforementioned circumstances present a serious risk of Venezuela acquiring and exercising control and administration of the territory in dispute in the present case. It therefore concludes that there is a risk of irreparable prejudice to the right claimed by Guyana in the present proceedings that the court has found plausible. The court further considers that Venezuela's expressed readiness to take action with regard to the territory in dispute in these proceedings at any moment following the referendum sc scheduled for 3 December 2023 demonstrates that there is urgency in the sense that there is a real and imminent risk of irreparable prejudice to Guyana's plausible right before the court gives its final decision. It was against that background that the court granted the provisional measures. Guyana intends to continue raising awareness on the controversy across the country and globally. Already, the government has launched a public relations drive and has also been courting the international community on the issue. More news coming up in just a moment. It was the start of GTT Christmas and all through the land. Not a smartphone was silent, all buzzing in hand. The stockings were hung by the modem with care in hopes that GTT prizes would soon be here. They say top up a grand or activate a data plan and just find the letters to GTT Xmas in the land. Plus, pay your bills on time, don't be a Grinch, and you could be a winner of the GTT Mega Million. Oh my lord! 
I just love to shop in this store. My customers, they're gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. How oh, so like them? Electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup. Gift land <laughs> office, Max. Guyana's favorite department store. your time to win big the massey store's christmas jackpot promotion is back and bigger than before spend five thousand dollars at any massey stores to be the lucky winner of a brand new mgzs and fantastic weekly store prizes from now until january 31st 2024 what are you waiting for head to your nearest massey stores to shop now see our facebook and instagram pages for more details massey stores our family serving your family. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Bust up! Bust the flavor, flavors! We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors! Bust the flavors that my crave for! We're full of flavors! Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors! Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors! Yeah! Thirst buster, grab a buster, bust the flavor, taste the savor. Buster, bust the flavor, flavors. Buster, bust the flavor, flavors. It's back again. The Guyana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union Make My Wish Come Through Christmas promotion is here. What are you wishing for this Christmas? It's another exciting Christmas promotion designed with you, our members, in mind. This Christmas, you can win big household appliances ranging from a fridge, washing machine, gas cooker, dining table, television sets, and much, much more. Here's how you can be a part of our Christmas promotion. You must be a member of the credit union in good standing. You must have an existing loan or must have taken your first loan with the credit union. You must fill out a coupon with your information clearly marked. Coupons for this promotion can be uplifted from our head office at Lot 45 Hatfield Street, Georgetown or from any one of our regional representatives countrywide. Promotion runs from October 30th to December 15th, 2023. What are you wishing for this Christmas? GPS CCU, people helping people. President Irfan Ali has welcomed the unanimous ruling by the International Court of Justice granting provisional orders that prohibits Venezuela from taking any action that would modify the situation that currently prevails in the Essequibo region. In a statement, President Ali said the court has made clear that Venezuela is prohibited from annexing or trespassing upon Guyanese territory or taking any other actions regardless of the outcome of its referendum on the 3rd of December that would alter the status quo in which Guyana administers and controls the Essex River region as an integral part of its sovereign territory under the arbitral award of 1899. President Ali said the ruling is legally binding on Venezuela, adding that both the UN Charter and the statute of the court to which Venezuela is a party require its strict compliance. This is an opportunity for Venezuela to join Guyana in demonstrating respect for international law and the principles that govern peaceful coexistence. Guyana remains steadfast in its commitment to the international judicial process and the rule of law. It is fully confident that when the ICJ issues its final judgment on the merits of the case, it will conclude 
that Essequibo is legally and rightfully Guyanese territory. President Ali, who is attending the Climate Change Conference in Dubai and is expected back in Guyana tomorrow, said Guyana remains grateful to the international community for its support. The solidarity of the international community with Guyana has been invaluable. We appeal to our sister countries of CARICOM and broader international community to continue supporting the principles of justice and international law in relation to the controversy over Guyana's border with Venezuela. Our collective voice can serve as a beacon for the respect of the United Nations Charter, the rule of law, and the peaceful settlement of disputes. And in his statement, the president also said that as Guyana prepares to join the UN Security Council as a non-permanent member, it is conscious of the responsibility that comes with the role to encourage and support international peace and stability and the rule of law. President Ali also said Ghana encourages all peace-loving nations to insist on Venezuelan respect for the Charter of the United Nations and the UN's highest court. Venezuela intends to still go ahead with its planned referendum on Sunday, but has been blocked by the court from taking any action as a result of that referendum in relation to the Essequibo region. The international community is reacting to the decision of the International Court of Justice to grant provisional measures in Guyana's case against Venezuela. The court has ordered Venezuela to refrain from any action on Guyana's Essequibo region. In a statement this afternoon, the 56-member Commonwealth still raised concern about the upcoming Venezuelan referendum on Guyana's Essequibo. According to the Commonwealth, there should be respect for national territorial sovereignty international law, global order, peace and security, and cordial international relations in the Caribbean and the Latin American region. The Commonwealth issued a call on all members of the United Nations to encourage the parties to respect the integrity, sanctity, and binding nature of the decisions of the International Court of Justice in the matter and the provisional measures under Article 41 of the Statute of the ICJ that have binding effect and create international legal obligations for the parties. The Commonwealth said it unequivocally condemns any action likely to breach the peace in the region. Meanwhile, the regional body CARICOM in its statement said the court's order prohibits Venezuela from taking such a measure or any other measure that would change the status quo in the territory, regardless of the outcome of the Venezuelan referendum on Sunday. And the head of the Organization of American States said that the OAS considers the decision by the ICJ as fundamental in requesting Venezuela to refrain from all provocative, warmongering, and illegal actions that encroach on the established boundaries of Ghana's territory. The court's decision is binding and must be respected by Venezuelan regime, the OAS said. In response to today's ruling, opposition spokesperson on foreign affairs, Amanda Walton Dazir, said the ruling affirms Ghana's right to administer and control the Essequibo region as an integral part of Ghana's sovereign territory and requires Venezuela to refrain from taking any action which would interfere with Ghana's exercise of that right, pending the final decision of the court. The opposition MP said that she would like to commend the court's insistence on emphasizing the imperative of stability and the refraining from action likely to further aggravate the dispute. She said even as they welcome the court's decision today and glean from it some measure of comfort and assurance, it is important that we all remember that securing the sovereignty and territorial integrity is not an event. It is a process, a process to which the strength and solidarity of the people are crucial. The opposition member of parliament said Guyana is grateful for the support of the international community and its international partners, regionally and further afield. Adding that at a time when the troubling ethos of might equals right threatens to dominate the interactions between nation states, Guyana is heartened by the assurances of the commitment to the due process of law and respect for national territorial sovereignty. The opposition MP also called on Venezuela to respect the ruling of the court and to demonstrate its commitment to the peaceful coexistence of states and the maintenance of the region as a zone of peace. She said in defending the sovereignty of Guyana, the entire nation must remain united as Guyanese first and must do all within the respective powers to ensure the preservation of that unity adding that the members of the APNU AFC parliamentary opposition will continue to offer support in that regard.
Guyana. This is your time to send a strong and decisive message. The government of Guyana is hosting national activities in response to Venezuela's referendum with a night of patriotic reflections at the Guyana National Stadium on Sunday, December 3 from 17 hours. Come in your numbers from every village, every town. Bring your family, your friends and neighbors. Come in your national colors as we unite for Guyana. There will be performances by local artists, sports personalities, and an address by His Excellency President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Esequibo belongs to Guyana. As you know, uh, we have been experiencing uh, power outages, uh, prolonged power outages that we are totally dissatisfied with. Right now, we are producing about 10 megawatt below what the peak requirement uh, necessitates. The truth be told, the pace at which we are growing would require us to double our capacity as quickly as possible. That is why the gas to energy project and the hydroelectric project uh, is, is so important for us. John Lewis Styles has opened a new department, now offering home goods. Here you can find quality sheets and towels, pillows, blankets and even bath mats and shower curtains. Organize your laundry with clothes baskets, fabric steamers, irons and ironing boards. For the kitchen we have small appliances, towels and mittens, pot sets and dinner sets too. Decorate the house with mirrors, picture frames, floating shelves and decorative pillows. All these and more on Waterloo Street. It's fashion for the home. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. Come on now, ping pong chairs, choo choos, and mm -hmm. it's so good. Feed your gravens, chocolate ah. rich, you'll be graven ah. And more, and more, and more, mm -hmm. here comes the crap. Ah. At that climate change conference in Dubai, President Irfan Ali told world leaders today that climate action cannot be to the detriment of the world's developing countries and poorest people, as he made a case for hybrid measures to form part of the solution to achieving net zero by 2050. The President addressed the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference of Parties, 28 in Dubai earlier today. He said COP28 will not achieve the desired objectives of putting the planet on a zero trajectory if the world continues to be divided on the matter. If the debate of COP28 is framed by two camps, one calling for no cuts in fossil fuel production, including the most polluting form such as coal, and the other saying that the only solution to net zero is an end to fossil fuel production, then we will fail once again to achieve a viable outcome and not to give our world the energy it needs to grow and prosper. Mr. Ali said what is needed is a hybrid of measures to achieve the target by 2050. I believe that net zero by 2050 as a target can only be achieved by a combination of measures that include a reduction in the fossil fuel production and the removal of large polluters out of the supply chain. And we reiterate our call for the removal of subsidies, incentivizing the introduction of renewables at scale, addressing the demand for energy, upscaling technology, for example, carbon capture and storage, and reduction in deforestation and land degradation through incentives and incentivizing the protection and sustainable management of forests. 
and the president also urged the conference of parties to agree to a just, orderly and affordable transition away from excessive fossil fuel use, and the transition that also includes accessible climate finance for developing countries and actions that could result in the maintenance of tropical forests and sustainable land use. Specifically, on tropical forests, the COP must finally turn the promise of climate action into reality. Halting and reversing forest loss globally by 2030 is potentially one-third of the available solution to keep 1.5 degrees in reach. Finance is key, and Guyana is pleased to co-chair the Carbon Markets Working Group of the Forest and Climate Leadership Partnership, consisting of 30 countries. Along with our partners in the SCLP, we'll be working to build high-quality carbon markets so that forest communities and countries can prosper while keeping nature intact. It was noted that Guyana was the first developing country back in 2008 to produce a low-carbon development strategy and today maintains one of the world's most intact tropical forests. According to the president, even with the production of oil, Guyana intends to remain a carbon net positivity country. Our economy will grow more than threefold while keeping energy-related emissions flat. We are building an ecosystem service economy with forest carbon markets generating 4.5% of government income this year alone. And it was noted that the forest carbon markets are also creating revenue for the more than 500 LCDS projects across indigenous and other communities while funding one of Ghana's biggest ever investments in adaptation. Vice President Barra Jack, there is among Guyanese officials attending the conference with the President in Dubai. As Guyana joined the rest of the world today in observing World AIDS Day, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said Guyana has made significant strides in the achievement of the 95-95-95 global targets set out by the United Nations on the HIV AIDS with more than 90% of the persons living with HIV already tested. The health minister said Guyana introduced newer and highly effective prevention modalities such as HIV self-testing and PrEP over the past few years. National AIDS Program Secretariat Program Manager Dr. Tariq Jagnarain during a televised program on World AIDS Day said HIV self-testing is among the country's successes as it works towards eliminating HIV as a public health issue by 2030. So one of the, the our greatest success is our self-testing. I really like uh, with the launch of that self-testing being able to reach persons, especially uh, persons who are reluctant to coming out and getting tested, uh, hidden and closeted individuals, um, being able to target key populations, being able to, to, to work with some of the communities and, and, uh, and provide services to them. And not only that, we've been able to develop lots of new policy changes, uh, policy updates like our HIV workplace policy, uh, new condom strategy. We have been making lots of successes and with that, um, the program has been making um, a great strides and leading the way towards eliminating HIV as a public health issue by 2030. According to the health ministry, the progress recorded is as a result of the collective efforts of healthcare workers, key populations and civil society communities, including people living with HIV and technical and development partners. It said the country will continue to work to ensure that effective programs are scaled up for universal coverage and access, leaving no one behind. The Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit has launched a probe into the discovery of 7.5 pounds of marijuana at one mile in Linden. In a statement, Kano said its agents were conducting an operation in the community this morning when a man was seen carrying a tub with a number of bulky parcels. The man abandoned the items and ran after spotting the Kano ranks. Kano said the agents found three large bulky parcels and the check of the contents revealed the 7.5 pounds of marijuana, which carries a street value of $1 million, according to Kano. The Drug Enforcement Unit has been fanning out agents to different parts of the country in its efforts to weed out and tackle the drug trade.
China's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Guy Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Guy Oil's profit goes back to building schools, roads, another important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial and aerial transportation. Guy Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new bus, the soda water, zero calories, zero sugar, zero artificial flavors, 100% refreshing. Taste bus, the soda water today. Bus, the soda water, now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Swetlana Marshall in the region. Dominican-born Dr. Carissa Etienne, a well-respected public health expert in the Caribbean and the world, has passed away. According to reports, she died during the early hours of Friday morning. Family members confirmed to reporters in Dominica that she collapsed at her home in Maryland. Dr. Etienne was the regional director for the Americas of the World Health Organization, WHO. Prior to that, she served as the director of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. She was an advocate for universal health coverage, and her contributions to the field of public health will always be remembered. Dr. Etienne had a distinguished career, starting as a medical officer in the Princess Margaret Hospital in Dominica before serving in various positions, such as director of primary health care services and chief medical officer. She was also assistant director of PAHO and assistant director general of health systems and services at WHO. Throughout her tenure, Dr. Etienne strengthened PAHO's technical cooperation and spearheaded innovative partnerships with both foundations and the private sector. She championed the attainment of universal health as a comprehensive goal for the Americas based on the primary health care approach. Dr. Etienne developed strategies, policies, and plans to expand access to comprehensive care, particularly for vulnerable populations and in underserved and rural areas. In a statement, Ghana's Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, said he was saddened by the sudden death of Dr. Etienne, who was a friend to Guyana. Oilfield Workers Trade Union OWTU President General Ansel Roget is calling for the Commission of Inquiry report into the Paria tragedy that claimed the lives of four divers to be made public and not sanitized. He made the call for full disclosure hours after the COE chairman Jerome Lynch submitted the report to President Christine Kangaloo. At a virtual press conference on Wednesday, Lynch said the 380-page report was completed, but he did not divulge any details about the findings, except to say that the 2022 tragedy was no act of God. Lynch added that everyone should ensure that the tragedy never reoccurs. The report was delivered 21 months after LMCS divers Faisal Carbon, Kazim Ali Jr., Yusuf Henry, and Rishi Nagasar died inside a Perea fuel trading company pipeline. And finally tonight, international news. 
The Biden administration on Friday issued long-awaited guidance that will limit Chinese content in batteries eligible for electric vehicle tax credits starting next year, according to Reuters. In a win for automakers, the U.S. Treasury will temporarily exempt some trace critical minerals from new strict rules barring materials from China and other countries deemed a foreign entity of concern, FEOC. The new rules required under an August 2022 law are designed to wean the U.S. electric vehicle battery chain away from China and are being closely watched by automakers as they make investment decisions on producing batteries for their transition to electric vehicles. The FEOC rules come into effect in 2024 for completed batteries and 2025 for critical minerals used to produce them. And that's your New Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.